Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're in the right spot if you're a broker owner, a team leader, maybe an individual agent, and you're looking to bring more value to the table. You're not looking for the same old strategies that everybody else teaches. By the way, Einstein defines insanity as doing the same things as everybody else. So in many markets, that ultra luxury, that high end luxury is difficult. The days on the market are increasing. Many are predicting that market is going to continue to be soft. And so we are always looking to bring on experts, luxury rock stars, contributors that you know, our marketers, they, they do things differently than everybody else. And today's guest is no different. A couple of housekeeping items before we bring on our guest. Again, if you have any questions about today, or if you'd like to nominate somebody to be a guest, or if you have questions about one of our previous episodes, again, you can find Luxury Listing Specialists on iTunes, Stitcher, or go to Luxury Listing Specialist on any of those sites, or go to LuxurySpecialistPodcast.com. Again, I'm your host, Michael Lafito. I'm the founder of the Luxury Listing Specialist Certification for Agents. Check it out, LuxuryListingSpecialist.com. And I'm the author of the book, Luxury Listing Specialist. All right, let's get right into things today. Uh, I'm excited to bring on today's guest. I saw him present uh, this past fall at the Luxury Connect Conference. Uh, Brad Inman and his team do a great job. If you haven't been to one of those events, I highly recommend it. Uh, Marcus Cantor is the Luxury Property Director and Founding Director of the New Homes Division of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, California Properties in Beverly Hills. Marcus is well known as a leader in just not just representing buyers, but also sellers of luxury properties and is consistently ranked in the top 100 of all agents in production and trans- transactions company-wide. Marcus is regularly quoted by leading news organizations such as the Wall Street Journal, Los Angeles Times, CNBC, and Forbes, just to name a few. And he brings over 30-plus years of experience in fine design and is considered an authority of architectural homes and iconic properties. I'm really excited uh, to have you on today's show, Marcus, so thank you for making time to be with us. Hi, Mike. Thank you for having me. Firstly, I, firstly, I'd like to take a moment and express my and our enthusiasm for your podcast. And on behalf of the St. James and Cantor team, my partner, Chrissy St. James, and our company, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, California Properties, it is our pleasure to be here and to be included and in part of our community of luxury real estate advisors worldwide. Well, you're absolutely welcome. It's an honor, and we're all about raising the bar for the industry, and I know you are as well, and so that's why we have you on today. And again, you're in that Beverly Hills market and that L.A. market, and let's, that's the first question I want to ask you is, you know, how would you describe that market? I mean, again, that's where the, the big conferences are. That's, that's where, you know, all the, the celebrities you see there, and, and there's some very distinct properties, and there's some record setters there. I, I believe there was just 100, maybe a $150 million sale there just this week. Absolutely. Well, 100%. So uh, for starters, uh, like you said, our luxury real estate market in Los Angeles is one of the most high end and unique in the world. And um, I'm really proud and honored that our company, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, participated in that sale of the Chartwell Estate in Bel Air. Um, Also, uh, some people might remember uh, way back, uh, a little bit before our time, the Beverly Hills Hillbillies it was the uh, mm-hmm. open credits estate, <laughs> and you're mm-hmm. right. It sold for about 150 million dollars. This was one of the. Well, this is the highest price sell in Los Angeles history, and what I think is so interesting and relevant is that since 2016, I mean, Los Angeles has had six sales of at least 100 million dollars or more. <laughs> um, you know, to 
quantify and explain how different Los Angeles and California is, uh, I have to start by mentioning and, 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 you know, speaking to our listeners that California is the fifth largest economy in the world. I don't think, I don't think everyone knows that. And, and if you consider that all of the UK is the sixth, meaning we're a larger economy than the entire UK, <laughs> this kind of gives an idea of why we have become the most attractive real estate market in the world. You know, one of those reasons I believe, Mike, is that Los Angeles is, Los Angeles is considered to be the most culturally and economically diverse, um, at least in all of the Pacific Rim, so all of the West Coast. And, you know, you look at it and you imagine that we're the number one entertainment capital in the world. We're the number two news media market only behind, you know, New York City. We have two of the world's top 10 trade ports. So literally, California is feeding a large part of, of, of the world today. Um, we're so diverse. I mean, we have major transportation brands, which include in, in innovators like Tesla and SpaceX. Um, we're the, one of the fastest emerging technology markets, one of the top five hospitality markets. I mean, I can go on and on and on, but it's, it's this economic driving force and the uniqueness of, I mean, right now I'm looking outside my window and it's 70 degrees in Los Angeles, and I know that's not the case all across the nation. So we're really blessed to have so many good fortunes here um, in California and Los Angeles being, you know, the, the primary market, uh, the largest market of California. We're really grateful to be in this market. Um, so those are some things I thought I'd, I'd put out there. Uh, one other thing that, that is also relevant is if you look at the nation, like to understand our luxury market, if you look at the nation and you consider all of the most expensive priced homes in the U.S., if you look at the, the actual zip codes, 82 of 117 of them that are on the national list are here in California. Interesting statistic. So 82 out of the top, it's a kind of a random number, but 82 out of the top 117 <laughs> listed properties in the U.S. are uh, in California. Is that correct? Yes, approximately 70% of them. Yeah, that's 70.1%. Uh, that, that's exactly interesting. <laughs> You're good with numbers. Um, so you look at that and you kind of understand that there's a lot going on here. There is. There is. And because there's a lot going on there, there's a lot of competition. Uh, there's a lot of multi-million dollar properties, which leads us to our first big nugget for today. Talk to me a little bit about you as an agent. You go on a, a, a listing appointment for a property that you know it's going to be you know, multi-million. It's either very customized to the, the owner, right, very personalized, or there's just some difficulties about it. Talk to me about what we talked a little bit you know, before we started recording, reverse engineering, the thought process when you take on one of these properties, before you, they even hire you, when you walk in on the listing appointment, talk to me about what's going through your brain as far as, hey, what am I going to showcase more of? What am I going to downplay? Do we need to neutralize? Do I need to bring in staging? You know, talk to me about the reverse engineering aspect for the property as well as figuring out who do you think the avatar or the potential buyer is? And so let's start there before we go into marketing strategies. Absolutely. That's a great question. Uh, and my pleasure to, to, to kind of illuminate a little bit about what and how we see. Um, so there's two things. You know, I think it's important to first talk about, you know, I think everyone who's a agent should focus on their strengths. Um, the beautiful thing about this business is that in real estate, um, as a real estate advisor, is that everyone has something unique to bring to it. And my background as a filmmaker, um, where I started as uh, marketing my own properties and having an architectural design build company, were some of my strengths that I brought into this business. Um, you know, I would categorize, that, categorize those strengths as one, branding. Um, two, creating marketing strategies like you just brought up, uh, and three, telling stories. So when I look at a, a listing, whether I'm going on a listing appointment or 
I and say have those again. Was... Say those again, real quick. Just th- those those are huge nuggets right there. Those three bullet points for those of you that are driving or you know, ha- take your phone out and 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 just take mental note of these three things that Marcus just shared with us. Absolutely. So three things that I'm very focused on, I believe, are are unique strengths in this business as luxury real estate advisors and marketers is that I focus on branding properties, creating powerful marketing strategies that are tailored to each unique property, which is part of the branding of a property. And I believe that people come and dream about living and creating and manifesting lives here uh, in Los Angeles because there's, they're attracted to a story. And every property has one, especially great, unique, luxury properties. What is going to make that property sell that no one else would have thought of? Or what is going to make that property sell? Because you understand, instead of being focused on the listing and putting everything up in the MLS or or, the multiple listing service, I'm focused on the actual buyer. When I sell a property and and I market it, I'm focused on knowing who the highest and best buyer is. I do my research. Um, And that can be attributed to the fact that a lot of people are local area specialists. And if you look at my background and my success with our team, we sold the second highest priced property to date ever in the Malibu Colony. That's, That's 40 minutes from Beverly Hills. We sold the second highest property ever in Rancho Santa Fe, Fe, that's San Diego County. That's about an hour and 45 minutes on a good day to get there. So I don't, I believe what we do works. And when I go to look Have car will travel. What I hear you saying is, you know, although you don't specialize in those areas 45 hour away, you believe in those three points, the branding, the, 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 the the power of 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 um you know the power of developing a a marketing plan and telling the story those three bullet points Marcus that you talked about you're focused on knowing who those buyers are and implementing those three points whether it be an hour a property hour away forty five minutes away by doing your same research and having systems you still develop. And, and try to determine who that buyer is, and then you implement those systems, no matter where the property is. No matter where the property is, no matter what the price, whether it's a luxury or not, I always take these principles into how I sell effectively and powerfully properties. Mm-hmm. That's huge. That's huge. So, again, there's an old adage that 80 to 90 percent of small businesses fail and 80 to 90 percent of franchises succeed because they have systems in the place. They, they have check marks. They're, they're doing things consistently. And, and listen what Marcus is doing, no matter not just luxury, but starter homes, average priced homes. They are de- trying to determine who that buyer is. And and so by determining who the buyer is, of course, you're doing some research on the market. Are they local? Uh, are they coming from a certain community? Uh, you know, is there a, is there a big uh, company or, or uh, uh, relocation company that, 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 that represents a lot of these buyers? What are some other things in your research that you, comes to top of mind, uh, awareness, that you can share that go into trying to determine who the buyer is and where they're coming from? Doing your research is key on any property, especially unique properties. And Los Angeles is the king of unique properties um, what I, at all prices. And people are attracted to come to Los Angeles because it, they can create their own unique lifestyle here, whether it's a lifestyle-driven property or a luxury-driven property. So in addressing your question about how to find the right buyer, and doing research. You know, it depends on the market. Uh, We have an area called Silicon Beach. And Silicon Beach is is because, you know, um, companies have been relocating from Northern California down to Venice Beach and Playa, you know, uh, Playa Vista and other areas that surround it now, West, you know, Westchester and other areas are starting to pick up um, as this expansion of techies have come into Los Angeles. And so, 
whether it's that as an example where you know one of your highest and best buyers, the ones that are coming with money into the area who are looking for that new property, that property that speaks to, in many cases, a millennial buyer who is making good money and now living here in Los Angeles, it's, it's, you want to know who that buyer is going to be. You know? Now, if you're selling, uh, you know, uh, for example, I currently have a Frank Sinatra listing that is up in the mountains. We call it the Frank Sinatra Desert Hideaway. It was one of the three properties he owned out in the Palm Desert, Palm Springs area. And we knew in marketing this property, we needed to reach the best buyer, which we believe is somewhat, honestly, uh, what, what makes the best buyer for a Frank Sinatra house? Well, number one, um, someone who's attracted to the brand or the icon of Frank Sinatra. Uh, most likely somebody who sees, it's one of two people. It's, it, it's somebody who sees that as an opportunity uh, to fulfill their own personal um, you know, love for Frank Sinatra and maybe has a collection uh, of Frank Sinatra or other iconic um, American icons, right? Um, another potential buyer for it and, and one that we've really considered is reaching the billionaire um, or the, the, the super high-end buyer who wants a piece of history, uh, wants to consider it to be part of, uh, wants to maintain that history. And we've actually, I mean, we're actually negotiating a deal right now. I can't go into the details, but it's having known who the buyer would be, potentially who the highest would be earning media that would attract it or paying for media that will attract it, creating stories, um, speaking to the press, uh, you know, bl blogging, blogging, um, you know, uh, putting ads in the correct magazines. All of those things would be how you would find the right buyer, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So not just exposure, but the right exposure. 100%. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. Talk to me about video. Uh, video, you know, is not going away. Are you incorporating video? On, on, on these properties, are they your typical lifestyle videos, you know, with cinematographic type, that only, or is it, is it that plus walkthroughs? Is it, you know, something different? Well, talk to me about video for maybe the Sinatra property or the Chartwell Estate, I know, you know, or, or some other of these record sales that you've had. So in regards to a property like the Frank Sinatra property or um, other high-end uh, luxury properties, as well as properties that we've, let me backtrack and say, it's important to also analyze what's the best media to reach your buyer. You know, if you're speaking to a millennial buyer, I mean, if you're not on social media, Instagram, et cetera, you are missing the boat in finding that buyer. If you're speaking to an international buyer who may not be able to come to the property itself, using VR or other 360 um, you know, current technology where someone could walk through the property is definitely a powerful tool. Video, we all know that you know, the majority of people online are passing photos and they're going to video. So if you really want exposure, there's no doubt that video is the number one way to, to find viewers online. So those are some of the things that you know, I think are very important into marketing a property, for sure. So, so finding the right media as well. So media includes video. You got, you got print, you got digital. Uh, of course, you have... Uh, yeah, events. Talk to me. A little. Do you do any uh, unique VIP type events at these properties where you know you have you have a list of high net worth individuals or or influencers and and I'm not talking the broker tour where you know the the, the part time agent that just comes for the 
food or the experience that doesn't have any buyers. But I'm talking, you know, invite only. What's your what's your take on that, Marcus? <laughs> so, Mike, I will honestly tell you there isn't any current marketing tool that I haven't used already. We're using and moving into digital marketing very, very quickly right now because that's where your money is spent wisely on the majority of properties today that we're selling. Okay, um, but there isn't really any tools that we don't use, so it's a really big question. Um, but I would also kind of address there are other things that are very important if we're talking about luxury real estate agents or even agents, because let's, let's go back to the beginning of our conversation. Los Angeles, entry level in the center of the city for a studio condo is like $450,000. <laughs> so if you look at the rest of the nation where you really can buy a beautiful four bedroom house, 3000 square foot, you know, on a beautiful backyard, maybe with a pool for $500,000 maybe less in some places, maybe a little bit more, you can see that we're a different market here. Yeah. So the one, so if you're talking about our market, and I think this is relevant to your listeners and, and relevant to uh, all people who are in business, is one thing that my partner Christy and I have been about since the very beginning is being an authentic brand being a brand that is about creating an extraordinary service experience. And that means a lot to us. That may not mean something to everybody and it may not be relevant to every market. But if you look at our business where some business are lead generation driven, our business is relationship driven. And those who are in the luxury real estate business or they want to grow into the top of their class, the blue chip properties in their area. The key, as I see it, and as we see it on our team, and I believe this is consistent even with our brand uh, in, in our company, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, worldwide, not just here, is I believe that it's about creating a level of service and about putting your clients first in such a way that they can't choose to work with anybody else and they will refer you forever. That's the best lead generation system in the world is people talking about you. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. And we, we know that high net worth individuals, you know, it's di very difficult to earn their trust. But when you do, and if you do what you say you're going to do and the experience is great, you know, those referrals uh, come naturally, but it's very difficult to get started, which brings me to my next question. Um, and this would be a uh, just a quick answer, if, if you would, because I do want to get into the extraordinary experience aspect of it. But but do you have one tip or suggestion for an agent that unfortunately maybe isn't in the L.A. market? Maybe they're in the middle, you know, uh, an average marketplace where the average price point, point is, you know, two to four hundred thousand or less. You know, but luxury is all relative. We teach in our certification course, Marcus, that we define luxury as three times the average sale price for that given market. So if the average sale price is 150, well, 450 and above would be luxury for that market. But do you have any suggestions, like one or two nuggets, if you were to go move to, you know, rural Iowa or Minnesota, or I, I, I'm not picking on the Midwest, but some rural area, you know, what what suggestions do you have for any of those agents that don't have the luxury of being in Beverly Hills that are looking to break into luxury? Absolutely. Firstly, I have to say that my partner, Christy St. James, is from Wisconsin. So okay. she brings a, we bring a very Midwest mentality to our business here in Los Angeles. Um, so to answer your question, you know, maybe the two or three things that I would do to establish yourself in a top luxury, as a top luxury, or just as the top agent in your, in your demographic. One, become an expert resource for your clients and, and, and offer value to them. Two, um, you need to create a track record. 
And so you're only as good as your last deal. You got to go one deal to the next, to the next, to the next. And you want to be real and authentic with your clients and create those relationships so that you're connected to them. But I consider this probably the third one I would say is if you're being the best, the best you that you can be at all times, and, and you're the best at, the prop, at, at, at every level that you're working at, whether you're at the intro level or not, and you consistently bring a luxury service and experience as your, as your success continues. In other words, the way that we personally got to the level that we are was we, we were very well known in what I call the lifestyle market here when I started, which is people come to LA, not everyone has a huge bank account, but everybody wants a luxurious experience. And what we did is we marketed you know, these 700 to one and a half million dollar properties uh, and, and, and less and more. But every time we did it, we always treated it like it was the most expensive property. We staged it. We put the time and energy and we brought the flowers and we made sure that we were there when the photos were being taken in order to tell the right story so that we always sold for more money and faster than anybody else. And that when they saw our properties, even my lease properties are shot by my very best photographer. I only have one level. It's the best. You know, it's, it's the best that I can bring and the best that, that I, and I believe it's, we're on, on the top echelon because of that. And the reason we got here is that we were always outgrowing and I, and you, you know what I mean by that. We were always exceeding the expectations of our clients. Our properties always look like they cost more money. And then the, when we went on to the next listing appointment for that bigger and maybe more expensive property, they looked at us and they just assumed we were selling the, you know, that level. And, and here we are now where there's really no level that we couldn't sell. And, mm-hmm. what, and we focused, like you said before, Christy and I have a, a motto. It's, it's almost our mantra, which is an extraordinary service experience. That's, to explain what that is, you've got to go to the, the Four Seasons or the Ritz or mm-hmm. you know, places where when you walk in, they know who you are and you feel like you're at home immediately. And, th- and the combination of a service experience that, that is at the very, very top, um, as well as a focus on our clients as being the most important thing to us and putting them first and then marketing on a level that outshines your competition every time as your clients grow, you grow, as you elevate your clients' lives, you elevate your business and your life, and that's been the formula. It's a great formula. Well, um, as we kind of wrap this up, I, you talked a little bit about the extraordinary experience just then, Ritz-Carlton, you know, going to a five-star hotel, you know, a, uh, a, a restaurant, uh, wh- whatever it might be, that, that white glove experience. Talk to me about what that looks like uh, for someone buying or selling a home with you and your partner uh, at Berkshire. We offer an incredibly personal and high-end service level for our clients. Some things you can talk about and some things you have to experience and discover. What we're offering is something actually our clients discover because it's we're present with them and we're available to them and we're not holding back. I mean, no matter what level, and, and let me backtrack and say for us, we're most proud that we did our biggest transaction and our smallest transaction ever on the same year. And that I know, because I'm friends with both of these clients, and so we're talking from, you know, the billionaire clients all the way down to, you know, us normal people, (laughs) okay? I know that they experienced the same extraordinary service experience in which they would say we were the only, they didn't know we were working for anybody else. We were, we we're so present to them and so on top of things. And, and we worked to create a seamless experience so that they didn't have to worry. And, and so your confidence and everything that you bring with your experience to the table is part of it. 
but the experience itself is something you have to experience. What can I say? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. But it, it, it basically, if you, if you guys didn't hear what Marcus said, the client felt like they were Marcus and his team's only client. You took the time. Um, you know, you returned phone calls promptly. You know, you were present. If you were showing them properties, you're not checking your, your, your cell phone and text messages. You're, 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 you're present. Um, you're getting to know them at a personal level, what their likes, what their interests are. These are all, you know, all uh, ways that you can d- deliver that experience is, is get to know them and be present in the moment. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt once says, nobody cares how much you know until they know you care. Be authentic. You used that word earlier, Marcus. So these are all really good reminders to some as well as a good refreshing you know, tip or an idea to others. So um, to, to kind of wrap things up here, folks, um, you know, Marcus really did a great job of, of talking about you know, the uniqueness, the melting pot, as well as, you know, 70% of, of the current, you know, highest price properties in the U.S. are, are based in his market. But, but he also kind of peeled the onion back a little bit and talked about reverse engineering and talking about, you know, the brand, the unique uh, branding and the, the strategies and, and, and then telling the story and, and focusing on knowing who the buyer is for all of his, his listings. And, and those are systems he's put in place along with extraordinary experiences. But, but being authentic, being likable, being in, you know, being present in the moment is key. So some really good nuggets and, and, and Marcus, for anybody that, you know, might have a referral in that Beverly Hills marketplace, what's the best way for them to, to, to get in touch with you? Absolutely. Number one, thank you for having me uh, today. It's really a pleasure to be part of contribution and being at service. Um, if someone wanted to reach us and our team, the St. James Cancer team here at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, California Properties, they can reach out to me at Marcus, M-A-R-K-U-S, at stjamescancer.com, and that's spelled S-T-J-A-M-E-S-C-A-N-T-E-R.com. Well, Marcus, I know you're very busy. Uh, again, we met in the fall, and I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to be on today's show. So thank you, and keep raising the bar in real estate. Right back at you guys. Thank you. Again, my name is Michael Lofito. Our podcast is part of the Industry Syndicate, basically a media network. So check out the Industry Syndicate. There's an app online as well. Uh, there's other podcasts in our industry in that Uh, It's a great group to be a part of. I'm I'm honored about that. And if you guys have any questions at all, shoot us a note. Um, My personal email is michael at Marketing Luxury Group, or you can shoot one to support at marketingluxurygroup.com. We just launched our new website. Check it out, luxurylistingspecials.com. If you're a broker owner, if you're a team leader, and you're looking to bring us a live training, a live certification training to your market, shoot us a note. We'll get you over the details. Keep raising the bar in real estate. My name is Michael Lafito, and remember, prove others wrong, and it's not the market, it's the marketing. Take care. Take care.